Welcome to vlog number 9. In this vlog we're gonna do some more work on the 286 PC. We're gonna do three things with the system. We're gonna check if the supercapacitor will work. I'm gonna try to upgrade the memory from 4 megabyte to 8 megabyte. I have two sticks of 4 MB each. So I'm gonna try if the system will work with them. Also I'm gonna try this Mitsumi double speed CD-ROM player with his own interface card. Let's start with the supercapacitor. I didn't power up the system for more than a month, so let's see if there is any charge left in the capacitor. As you can see the supercapacitor upgrade is a really success. It still remembers the hard drive and all the settings. I have a separate video about uh, the replacement of the supercapacitor and I will link it in the description. We need to remove the power supply to see the supercapacitor and access the memory. Here you see the supercapacitor which replaced a leaking battery. The system has four sticks of one megabyte. Gonna remove two sticks to see if the system will boot up with only two sticks. Okay, the system accepts two memory sticks. So let's install the bigger uh, four megabyte sticks. Let's try it out with the four megabyte sticks. It only shows one megabyte per stick, so I don't know if the system is compatible with uh, four megabyte sticks. And it looks like the system is crashed. Alt Control Delete doesn't work, Delete to run the setup doesn't work, so I don't gonna install. 8 megabytes of memory in the system. I will put the 4 k 1 megabytes of memory back in the system. So the memory upgrade was not a success. So let's try the CD-ROM player. The first thing we need to do before we can install the CD-ROM interface card is check the settings together with the sound blaster. The sound blaster is on IRQ5 and the I.O. card on IRQ10. The DMA of the sound blaster is 1 and the DMA of the CD-ROM interface card is 5. So they don't uh, conflict with each other. To fit all the cards we first need to rearrange the I.O. controller to the upper slot so we have room for the other cards. I put back the power supply and installed all the cards. Let's see if the system will boot with the extra card installed. The system looks ok with the extra card, so let's connect the drive and find the drivers. I never used this drive before, so I don't know if it will work. Ok, that works. I found the Mitsumi CD drivers on ibmpc.org. Here I have my floppy with uh, driver, so I gonna add uh, files to the floppy and install it. I already have downloaded the drivers, so here they are. Let's copy them. It comes with a setup file, so I hope that it is an easy install. Let's see how easy it is to install the drivers.
that was a very helpful setup program, so let's hope it will work. It looks like the CD-ROM driver is installed without errors, so let's try it out. Okay, we have a working CD-ROM player in the 286 machine. Yes! To play audio CDs we need an audio cable between the CD-ROM player and the sound card or to the CD-ROM I.O. controller. I didn't have the right cable but I managed to find out the pin layout of the drive and the I.O. controller and I made a uh, custom cable between them. And I even had to move the cables in the connectors and it took me uh, quite some time to figure it out. The speakers are now connected on the audio output of the I.O. controller and let's play a CD. I gonna play the CD of uh, Mold Over. It's a friend and an artist out of San Francisco and you should really check out his music. As you can hear the CD-ROM player plays audio CDs. The cable is connected to the I.O. controller and the speakers are on the line output of the I.O. controller. If I connect the drive to the CD input I don't get any sound through the sound card. Also if I connect the drive on the line input I also don't get any sound through the sound card. Does anyone know how I can get these two ports working on the Sound Blaster CT1600, it's a 2.0 Pro. Let me know in the comments. I tried to find the, the drivers of the CT1600 card, but I didn't have luck installing them. Let's put the CD-ROM player in the drive bay. This case with the built-in CD-ROM looks freaking awesome and of course turbo button is working. I really like how this project is coming along. The SuperCap upgrade is a really success. Too bad the memory upgrade didn't work out but 4 MB is more than enough for DOS. I really love that the CD-ROM player is working now. As a kid I had the same drive, so it's a kind of special for me. And I got the I.O. interface card from eBay and that's also working great. The only thing I need to do on the system is find out how the CD-ROM player connects through the sound card. And then make a final build video of the whole system where I first take it apart and then I build up the whole a machine with good cable management and uh, make a nice video about it. Thanks for watching, please like and share this video, subscribe and leave a comment. See you next time.